All right, how's it going everyone? So one of my Discord users asked me if I could kind of talk a little bit about Cypress. So that is what I'm gonna try doing today in this video. So Cypress is a tool you can use to do end-to-end -end testing. I believe they also support component testing now, um, but it might be in beta. But we are gonna to try to just kind of show you how you can get this set up and then test it against a Next.js application that I have locally. So I have a project set up. I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, what this what this is. It's just a simple registration page and you can basically type in a first name, last name, and age. And if I click submit before I type in some fields, we get some errors, right? So the idea is we want to add a end-to-end -end test that tries to register with nothing filled in, validate that certain error things pop up, and then fill in all the information correctly, click register, and then verify that we go to a new URL. All right, so a little, little talk about intent -end testing. It's intent -end testing is one of those um, uh, seesaws. If you invest too much time with doing intent -end tests, you're gonna end up having a lot of brittle tests that take a very long time to run, right? If you know anything about the testing pyramid, uh, let's just go to here. This is a decent one, I guess. So typically what they recommend doing is you have a lot of UI tests, or sorry, you have a ton of unit tests, and then you have a decent amount of integration tests, and you have a little amount of end-to-end -end test or UI tests, right? And the reason for that is this diagram, which my head might be cutting off, but basically as you go up the pyramid, stuff becomes more costly to maintain, more costly to run in your CI CD environment. Uh, and as they get lower in the pyramid, it's usually cheaper to fix if something's broken and easier to refactor these unit tests compared to integration tests and intent test, right? So you can have like thousands of unit tests run in a minute. You could have maybe one or two or three intent tests run in a minute. So that's just kind of putting it in perspective. And I have seen a ton of intent tests fail, like randomly when trying to actually run these in circle and, you know, CI CD pipelines. So keep that in mind, but let's just kind of overview what Cypress is and we're going to try to test this little application here. So to get Cypress set up, you just say npm install save Cypress. And I, actually, I don't know if you even need to add it to your package, Jason, to be honest, but we're gonna go ahead and say npm or npx Cypress open. So what this is gonna do is that is going to open the Cypress dashboard, okay? and this allows you to kind of pick and choose what tests you want to run, uh, you know, get some feedback. This is a really great tool. I'm going to share with you how this all works. But let's just go ahead and click end-to-end -end testing, and we're going to configure some end-to-end -end tests with Cypress. So right now it says not configured. So if you first run this on your project, it will configure Cypress. So after clicking that and going back to the project, we now have a Cypress folder with support and fixtures. And what we can do... Oh, we also have a Cypress config, right? This is like some helper functions you can use. But going back to the Cypress dashboard, let's click continue. And I'm gonna go ahead and click Chrome. If you have other browsers installed or set up, you can do Chrome, Electron, et cetera. And I'm gonna just say, start end, end testing with Chrome. All right, so now we have another page where we can actually create our first empty spec file. So if I click on this, That'll create a spec file. I'm gonna call this register and click create spec. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this code. Actually, I might not even need to copy it. I think it just automatically put that file here. All right, so we have that file and let's go ahead and run it. So I'm gonna click okay, run the spec and you will see Cypress will actually run through this test and it'll show you the results of what it sees. All right, and then on the left here, you can actually click on your different test files as you add more and navigate between them and run them separately if you want to like check stuff out. But let's try to modify this test to make it verify that Next.js application that we talked about. So this one, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and say describe, um, let me zoom in one. I'll say registration or register page. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, <clears throat> should show validation errors when leaving all fields blank. That's our test case. A little information about Cypress. Um, the way you write your test is you have these describe blocks. So you have like a description of what the block is doing and then a, you have a pass it a callback function. And then inside of this block here, you're gonna pass it it statements, okay? So again, you describe 
the smaller piece of functionality that you expect to happen, and then you write a little function to kind of verify it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to basically visit, um, instead of example at cypress.io, we're going to say localhost 3000. So visit localhost 3000, and what we can do is we can start asserting certain things on the page. So let, let me just slap some of this stuff. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find this button called submit and we want to click it. Okay. So one way that you can do this in Cypress is you can add data attributes and they kind of show this in their docs, but you can go ahead and say like data size submit. And the reason I'm using a data attribute for kind of adding a unique descriptor for these DOM elements is because if you start writing your Cypress test using class names or IDs, you have a chance of writing some really brittle tests, especially if people come through and change the styling, it might break all your tests. So you wanna use data IDs, and we're gonna go ahead and try to get that button. So in Cypress, the way to get a DOM element is you say sci.get, and you can pass it that selector here, okay? This could be any CSS selector, so this would be like button, but I'm just gonna leave off button because it's kind of descriptive enough to know what I'm getting. So this will get the element on the page if it exists, and we can actually do dot click if we want to. So let's just go ahead and save that. And notice that when you save this test file, Cypress will actually rerun your test. Okay? And as it runs the test, you can go back in time and hover over like what happened as it did stuff. So like the first thing it loads the page and then it clicks on the button and you can see that it goes from not having red validation errors to red validation errors. All right, so that's good. We want to verify that these errors show up. So let's add some more descriptors to the validation. I'm going to go ahead and add one here and here. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one error last name. And this one could be called error age. So after clicking this click button, we want to verify that we have those error things displayed to us, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say data, psi, error, last name and the way you can check if an element exists you can say should exist okay um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for error age okay so these things should exist on the page after clicking on submit button so let's go back and our test is still green so everything is passing <clears throat> okay and to get a list of these assertions you can go to the Cypress docs and go to references and go to assertions here and they have a list of all the different things you can put inside of that should function, okay? So you can do like uh, expect whatever not to equal Jane. Actually, maybe you need to go down to, all right, they have some examples here. So just read through these. Like if you need to like do different stuff here, very easy to just change how you're asserting. But let's, let's actually go back. Um, the next thing we want to do is make sure that when we fill out these forms, that we can actually submit the page. So I'm gonna make a new one that says, should redirect the user to a success page when filling the forms and clicking submit. Okay, so pretty long test description, but probably good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this selector here. And another method you can do is type. So I can actually send text to this input right here. So last name, I can say like Bob, and I'm gonna do the same thing with age. So let's just go ahead and say age, I'm gonna do 25, and then I'm gonna click this again. All right, so fill in the two forms, click the button, and let's go back to Cypress and see what happens. Um, it looks like it is actually failing. And the reason is because I'm actually trying to type into an error whereas I should be typing into an input. So let's go back to the page here. I'm gonna go ahead and on the inputs, which are here uh, and here, I'm gonna go ahead and add another thing called age input. So data psi age input. And on this one up here, I'm also gonna do the same thing. So this, this could be last name input. And that was my bad. So let's just go here and refactor this a little bit to age input and last name input. And that is how you can grab them from the page. Go back to Cypress and notice that all the test passes, all the tests passed. We are now on a success page. So we should probably verify that the URL says something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say sci.url should 
Um, I think you can do a match keyword if you want to do regex. So I want to make sure that the thing that is the thing that we get redirected to the URL is a success endpoint. So I think I can do something like this. And there we go. So clicking on this, notice that it did check that we went to the success URL by using some regex to match that. Um, and that's about it. You can do some cleanup and some refactoring if you want to abstract some of these things away and put them in a separate folder called like pages. I think that's an approach some people take. Or you can just take these and put them as constants to the top of your page as well. I think that might work. I, I, well, actually, let me, let me take that back. You might actually have to call this inside the steps because the way Cypress kind of works behind the scenes is it uses like a bunch of chaining and promise chaining. So you may actually have to call this directly here, but you could take this string here if you want to. And like, I could kind of extract this, like I said, like error last name selector. And I could potentially just put that up here if I wanted to like this. Okay. And that'll make your code a little bit cleaner because you might be, you know, needing to grab multiple selectors in multiple places inside your test. But that's just kind of an overview of how you could potentially clean this up if you wanted to. So yeah, I mean, that's basically the gist of Cypress. You basically just write a bunch of tests that kind of do things in your UI and verify functionality the same way a user would do, right? So go through buttons, click buttons, click on drop downs, sort tables, et cetera. Anything that you think would need to be tested by an actual user, you can write with a Cypress test. Now I will say that if you can try to test whatever you need with uh, a unit test or integration test, then I would definitely do it with a unit test or integration test because these Cypress tests will add up and they will slow down your entire build process unless you set up some type of like parallel build running thing so that you have like a bunch of machines all parallel processing your cypress tests and running these super fast but you know the more machines you have the more money it's going to cost to get that running but i just wanted to kind of share that with you because i do think cypress is a great tool in their rewind functionality we can actually go back in time and see how stuff works is you know it's awesome you can also inspect since this is just chrome you can actually inspect and like check out the console logs and check out elements and stuff like that if you want to but uh yeah hopefully that was a good overview of cypress and you feel more confident writing cypress tests over over your end-to-end -end, uh, ui functionality anyway have a good day and happy coding